think, praise God, for this opportunity to stand before you guys uh, and to bring the word of the Lord. Um, good morning. Um, it's, it's uh, wow, that's a, that's a better response than I expected. Um, I'm usually on the other side, so I don't know what it's like to be on this side of the stage. Um, and it's really scary, actually. Um, and so I really thank God for giving me this opportunity just to stand before you all and to bring the word of God. Um, and uh, whether you're joining us here in person or online, uh, we're excited to have you, and I'm excited to dive in to see what God has been teaching me and hopefully something that you can learn as well. Uh, for, for the past 11 months, uh, God has been teaching me something um, that is very hard for me to understand um, as a human being and as a person, um, and it's, it's the concept of dependency. Um, I like to depend on myself. If you know me, I like to do things on my own, and I like to uh, even my parents, they, I, I never really talk to them about anything, and I'm just always doing everything on my own. And it's really just a form of me trying to be dependent on myself. And 11 months ago, God stopped me in my tracks, and he said, you need to start depending on me, or your life is going to end in a failure that you're not going to recover from. And, and, and throughout this whole year, we can see how the pandemic has brought us to a point of where we realize, man, what are we doing without God? And, and, and three months ago, he put um, this topic into my head that really uh, is just a question that I didn't know how to answer and something that he's been continuously teaching me. And that is, is dependency your posture? Um, you're probably wondering, what, is, what does dependency have to do with posture? Uh, if you ask any medical professional, uh, they'll say the posture is very important for you. The way that you stand, the way that you conduct yourself, the way that you uh, go about doing things. It's not only physical, it's also a mental thing. Uh, the way that you posture yourself every day matters. So if we don't posture ourselves in dependency, we, we tend to fail. And make it worse, we don't posture ourselves in dependency on God, we will always fail. And, and so the reality is a question we must ask ourselves not only uh, today or the day that you got saved or the day that you got baptized. It's an everyday question. Is dependency your posture? So if we could just turn to uh, Daniel chapter 6. Um, and the verses are going to be on the screen or the passages. And if you can follow through, uh, that'd be great. Um, God has taught me three different types of posture that we need to have in order uh, to know and realize that we are being dependent on God and God alone. Um, the first one is having a posture of prayer. In Daniel chapter 6, we see the story of Daniel uh, and him facing opposition from the people in the kingdom. Uh, those who were jealous of him, those who were uh, jealous and eyeing of his position and his power. But not something he, he attained on his own, but something that he had got by trusting in God. And, and, and we see that um, in, in a situation like that, when people are, uh, when the world is coming face, nothing is going well for us. But yet David, Daniel's response, sorry, in the situation is so simple. In, in verse 10, it says, when Daniel knew that the document, the very thing that, that was going to stop him from being dependent on God, had been signed, he went up to his house. So it's interesting. The first thing he does is he already has a posture to walk up to his house. And he goes into the windows in the upper room, and he opens it towards Jerusalem. And I always thought that was weird, because why is he opening a window? I never have to open my windows here to talk to God. But he opens the windows because he's looking at his hope, which is Jerusalem, which is his glorious sight. He, he knows that God has set that promise before him and nobody can take that away. And the best part is he kneels. He literally kneels and he says, God, I am depending on you not once, not twice, but three times every day. And he didn't start yesterday. Dependency doesn't start day before or, or, or whenever this happened or that happened. It starts every single day of your life that you choose. Dependency is a posture and posture in prayer. He chose to actively pray every day before the trouble came, before the struggles came, right? We can see that in Mark chapter 6, verses 45 to 51. We can see Jesus drawing himself away from the crowd and we can see him 
going up to the mountain, whereas his disciples are already out on the sea. And the reality is Jesus knew that if he did not posture himself in prayer, there was no way he could walk on that storm. There was no way he could posture and walk himself out on that sea and tell his disciples and show them, if you do not depend on God, if you do not rely on God, you will not walk through your storms. You will not be able to go through and you will not be able to go unfazed. And without that type of posture, there was no way we can navigate our own lives, whether it's school, whether it's the things that we face on a daily basis, without posturing yourself in prayer, it's not going to work. And it's a choice we have to make daily. And, and, and we have to make that active choice of God. I'm choosing to posture myself in you, but through prayer, right? And so uh, as we continue to build a posture of prayer, that isn't enough for us, right? You can't just pray and hope everything's going to be okay. You have to create a mindset. And this is where we can turn to uh, Psalm 34, verse 1. And we, when we look at the, the life of David, we see a posture of praise. And it says, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be on my mouth. I don't know about you, but when trouble comes my way, when struggles and hardships come my way, my first response isn't always to go to God. My first response is to ask myself, what do I do? What do I do that I can help myself get out of this mess? What can I do to fix this? What can I do? But the reality is I'm never thinking, what can God do, right? What is God trying to tell me? My, and, my, and my first thought is to be like, thank you, God, for giving me a failing grade. Thank you, God, for uh, this, this incident that happened in my life. My first thought isn't to thank God for the troubles because it's so much easier to praise God when we get the job or when we get uh, whatever it is that we've been seeking out in our life. And so much easier just to praise him then. But look, church, let me ask you, are you ready to thank him when you have nothing, right? Are you ready to just posture yourself in praise just as David did every day? His life, his entire life, that's all the Psalms are saying is just praise, 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 praise. And he's just praising God. In 1 Samuel 30, verses 6 through 7, David was greatly distressed. It's a story of him being at Ziklag and, and, and how the enemy, the Amalekites, had taken everything. His family, his possessions, uh, everything that his men owned, everything. And in that moment, all his men wanted to do was kill him. They wanted to stone him. But God, uh, God in his infinite wisdom, knew what he was doing. And David in knowing that the only way he could get through that was to strengthen himself in the Lord, right? He strengthened himself not only in prayer, because prayer is great, but what is prayer going to do to get his family back? He praised God for that situation because he calls Abithar the priest, and he says, bring me the effort, the very thing that I'm interceding for, the very thing that I'm going to seek out God's will for, I'm going to praise him. And that was a low point in David's life. That was one of the very lowest points. But here we go to 2 Samuel verses 6, uh, 13, uh, chapter 6, 13 to 15. And we see um, those who bore the ark of the Lord had uh, gone six steps. He sacrificed an ox and a fattened animal. And David danced before God with all his might. So he's out here like dancing. He's being shameless before the entire congregation before an entire nation wouldn't it be funny to see trump or biden or whoever of any leader of any country dancing before their entire nation i've never seen it and and that's the, that's the reality because his heart was in that place to be god i'm gonna pray to you but i'm gonna praise you even when i have nothing right so in ziklag he had nothing yet he praised and even when he had the entire kingdom before him even when he had everything he was shameless before God. He praised with all his might. He praised with everything that he had. So much so that his wife despised him. And the best part is if you keep reading, he looks at her and he says, I will be even more shameless for God. So in your situations where you don't know what is going on, you don't know when you're going to go through that semester of school. You don't know how you're going to get through this health or this sickness. Are you still willing to be shameless and praise God for it? right? 
that's the reality because when he did that, not only did he impact himself, but he impacted an entire kingdom in the way that he led. So your praise and your prayer matters. It is because the way that you posture yourself, the way that you carry yourself in the presence of God that really matters in every season, in every way, in the highs and the lows, that's what David did. He praised God and he prayed. He just, he just postured himself in that prayer because he knew that without God, all this is meaningless. All of this is, 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 just, is just not even worth a life that is living without setting yourself in posture. Um, I, I just, if, if these were the only two things in, in, in being, uh, uh, setting ourselves apart in posture, I think we would be satisfied. Let's just praise God for this and let me just pray to God and that's it. But the reality is there's a third aspect that we, we always forget. And it's something that King Saul forgot too, right? And if you, if you look at his life, you can see how his life ended. And it's a posture of obedience, right? In, in Genesis 39, uh, uh, chapters 39 to 41, and all these, all these passages below, you can see the lives of three different people, um, uh, three different types of people that had lived in obedience to God. It's great to posture yourself in prayer, and it's great to praise God. But if you don't have the obedience to do it every day, it's pointless. If you don't have the, the consistency to do it every day, regardless of what's going on, it's pointless. When we look at the life of Joseph in Genesis 39 to 41, you can see that he was taken from his father's home and sent to a different land. He went from the pit to the palace, but the reality was he didn't get there on his own, right? I was thinking, he came as a young man, he had nothing, there was nobody around him, no community, no church, no Bible, nothing. But how did he learn to depend on God? Who taught him that he needed to rely on God? He couldn't Google it, there was no one he could talk to about it, there was not a single person, but people were coming to him to find out God. See, that's the reality. When we learn to depend on God, people are going to come seek it out from us. Because they see that obedience and they see what God is doing in and through us, right? And, and the reality is he never wanted the glory for himself because he knew that without God, he was nothing, right? And I was thinking, like, man, who taught him to be like this? And, and, and it was so simple. His father, Jacob, his father, Israel, taught him from a young age to listen to God, to go back to God. And that very lesson led him for the next entirety of his life. From his place uh, in the pit to the uh, Potiphar's house, he learned to be obedient. I will not sin against my God. I will not bring any defiling thing into my life. Even to the prison where he was standing there. I, this, this gift that I have is not mine. Interpretation is from the Lord. And even when he went to Pharaoh's house. Even when he went to the palace. He, he is standing in front of the ruler of a kingdom. And he could take all the glory if he wanted but he remembered God. He was obedient to know that honor the Lord your God in all that you do, right? And we can look at the life of Abraham. Simple obedience. Stepping out in faith and truly just stepping out beyond the borders of what had been asked. In, in Hebrews 11.8, it says that by faith, Abraham obeyed when he was, he was called to go out to a place uh, and he was to receive an inheritance. And when he went out, not knowing where he was going... Not knowing what was happening with his life. Sometimes we're not going to know what God has called us to do. Sometimes we're really not going to know. Who knows when this pandemic, when this situation is going to be over. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's the normality of our life now. Who knows what God is calling us to do. But are we willing to be obedient to it? Because you can get that degree and you can get that job. You can do this and that for the kingdom. But it's pointless if you're not in obedience. And we can see that in the life of Saul. All that sacrifice, all that you're doing in your life, it's, it's honestly meaningless if you have no obedience to the Father. And there's no point going through without realizing that that obedience is, is humbling yourself and depending on God, right? And it's simple obedience. And, and, and just to, I'm going to go ahead and call the worship team up here and they can come up. But um, the last thing, the last set of people that I wanted to just touch on was Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. In Daniel chapter 3, verses 17 to 18, it says... Uh, a response from uh, th those three talking to Nebuchadnezzar. If this be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of your hand. 
Or if it is our God whom we serve is able to deliver us, he will deliver us from the burning. Uh, but if he is not to be known to you, sorry, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. So they postured themselves in obedience. These are men who are in positions of power in the kingdom. They had everything to lose. They're looking at the very person who can kill them. And they're saying, even if God, even if God doesn't come through for me today, even if God doesn't save me from this situation or this, uh, this, uh, this thing that I'm going through today, are you willing to be obedient to God even in that? Even if God doesn't give you that job, if he doesn't give you that grade, if he doesn't help you with your finances, are you willing to be obedient to God in that? So let me ask you, what is a posture of dependency? And it's simply this. A posture of dependency is an action done consistently regardless of what's going on currently. So, church, let me ask you today. Are we willing to just submit ourselves and be in a posture of dependency before God? Are we willing to look at God and be like, God, I will pray to you daily. I will praise you. I will obey you regardless of what is given to me. I will go through my life in honor of you regardless of what people say about me or what happens in my life. Because if you're not depending on God, ask yourself who you're depending on. God made all these resources, but they're resources, not your source, because he was your source. But we make all these resources our source. We make our finances our source. We make our family or this and that or different things our source. But those are all just made to be our resources. So ask yourself, what are you depending on? And how can you be in a posture of dependency? If you could just stand up with me as I, as I just end off in prayer. Father, I thank you, Jesus, for this time. We thank you, Jesus, for the word that was set before you, God. We just give it to you, Lord. I pray for every single person seated here, oh God. And everyone watching online, whether it's now or throughout the week or whatever is going on, God. I pray that we are able to posture ourselves in dependency before you, Jesus. I pray that we are able to pray before you, to praise before you, and to obey you wholeheartedly, Father God, regardless of the circumstances that are going on in our lives, Jesus. And I pray that as we take this time to worship you, that we would posture ourselves in praise before your name, oh God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.